I got a new computer, Woo the MSI GP76 Leopard. Ooh. But how does it work with Blender? Let's put it to the test and see. So I've been working with Blender on a desktop the past couple of years, and it's met my needs quite nicely. But as my interest in Blender has grown, so has my desire to take it with me when traveling and on the go. Enter the ultra-fast, born-for-performance gaming laptop, the GP76 Leopard made by MSI. This laptop is very well optioned in my opinion, coming with an 11th gen Intel i7 chip, 512 gigabyte SSD, 16 gigabyte DDR4 RAM, a laptop version of the Nvidia RTX 3070 GPU with eight gigabytes VRAM, a large 17 inch screen with 240 Hertz refresh rate, three USB ports for your peripherals like mouse and tablet, and a full layout Steel Series per key RGB keyboard with number pad. At the time of filming, this computer can be had for about $2,200 Canadian or about $1,740 US. To start putting the laptop to the test, I thought I'd make use of Blender's benchmarking program, Open Data, which can be found here. This program has a number of different Blender scenes that put your computer through its paces, and the results you can then measure against a database of others. If you wanted to do this yourself, just go to this website and download the program right here, navigate to where you saved it, then open the program which is called Benchmark Launcher, click Next Step, and then you can pick the version of Blender you are using. I'm using the latest, so I'm going to go with 2.93. Here you'll find the six different Blender scenes you can use to test your computer's rendering capabilities. Keep in mind that any scenes you select here will be downloaded to your computer and then tested consecutively back to back. So I'm just going to do one for now, the BMW car scene. Here you can pick between testing your CPU or GPU. I'm going to start with the CPU, which is the 11th gen i7-11800H. Now just click benchmark and the test will begin. You don't need to have Blender open at this point, it will all run in the background. You can see here on the hardware monitor that as the test runs, my CPU temperature jumps quite high to 94 degrees Celsius or 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Generally, you don't want your CPU to get this hot. The fans also got very loud at this point as well. All in all, it took 3 minutes and 16 seconds to complete the test, which isn't too bad. Looking at the database of results on Blender's Open Data website, we can see the laptop held up quite well to other modern CPUs doing the same test. No glaring issues with the laptop's performance in Blender, which is great to see. Okay, so let's test the GPUs now. Opening the benchmark launcher again, Blender version 2.93 for me, and the BMW scene only. Because this laptop has an NVIDIA card, it has two rendering options, CUDA or Optics. CUDA is a more general purpose render, whereas Optics is a ray traced render and is typically faster in most cases. To start, I'm gonna go with the CUDA option. Here you can see on the hardware monitor that the GPU temperature stays cool, calm, and collected at 61 degrees Celsius or 142 degrees Fahrenheit. The fans at this point were were barely noticeable, which was nice. All in all, the GPU and CUDA only took 28 seconds to complete the render. Taking a peek at the database results again, we can see the laptop GPU held its own when compared to desktop versions, while still being able to maintain decent temperatures and fan noise. And finally, testing the GPU again, but in optics this time. Here you can see again on the hardware monitor that the GPU temperature barely breaks a sweat at 61 degrees Celsius at 97% usage. The fans again were barely noticeable during this test as well. When it was all said and done, the GPU and optics only took 17 seconds to complete the render. And taking a look one last time at the database results, we can see that the laptop 3070 GPU holds strong against its desktop counterparts, while still maintaining decent temperatures and fan noise. The benchmarks are all great, but the big question here I think is, how does it fare under regular use? I thought I'd try doing a simple high poly sculpt to see how the laptop performed in terms of responsiveness, how it felt under my hands in terms of temperatures, and how it sounded in terms of fan noise. So here I'm just starting out my sculpt. The model at this point has a low poly count of about 20,000 vertices, and the responsiveness in the viewport is excellent. Zero lag, and the temperature of the keyboard is very cool. If I'm being honest, I was a little bit surprised at how quickly the fans came on here, but overall the fan noise was moderate, so I didn't find it to be too big of an issue. 
Here the poly count has increased a little bit. I'm probably at about 200,000 vertices at this point, and the responsiveness is still extremely good. Absolutely no lag at all. And the temperature of the keyboard is still cool. The fan noise, as you can hear, has increased a little bit from the first stage, but nothing alarming or distracting in my opinion. Here the poly count has increased even more to about 500,000 vertices. Responsiveness is still extremely good, no lag. Temperature is still good as well. The keyboard is not hot and is comfortable to have my hand over. The fan noise has gone up a little bit, but still tolerable at this point. At this stage, I decided to turn on my hardware monitor again as well. You can see down here the poly count is now getting pretty high. I'm at about 1 million vertices. Responsiveness is still extremely good though, which was great. Temperature has gone up. The GPU and CPU are at about 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit, but the keyboard is still comfortable and not hot. MSI did a good job of channeling the heat transfer so that it comes out more above the keyboard underneath the screen and not right underneath your hands. The fan noise has gone up even more though, with both of them running now as you can see here, and things are somewhat loud at this point. Here the poly count is a little higher at 1.4 million vertices. Responsiveness is still good though, no lag. Temperatures interestingly enough have gone down a little bit to about 50 degrees Celsius, and now only one fan is going, so it's a little bit quieter. This was good as the laptop wasn't necessarily noisy all the time while working. Here I decided to really push the envelope and increase the poly count to about 10 million vertices. I was honestly expecting the laptop to catch fire at this point, but it was surprisingly responsive with very little lag. Temperatures didn't really increase too much from before either, which was nice, staying around the 60 degree mark. Overall, the laptop performed very nicely with sculpting. Next, I tried some vertex painting on the high poly model. As expected, responsiveness was very low as you can see. The temperatures were relatively high and the fans were moderately loud. Most computers do not perform well in this area, however, so this was of no surprise. Next, I tried some UV unwrapping on the re-topologized version of my model, and performance was great. UV unwrapping isn't typically a demanding part of the character workflow, so responsiveness was high, temps were low, and the fans were quiet. And finally, I tried texture painting my low poly model with a 4K texture map. Responsiveness was high, little to no lag, which was great. Temps were a little bit higher, sitting at around 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, with the occasional spike to 90 degrees and above when using the soften brush. Fans were moderate to high as well, so something to keep in mind if you're doing texture painting with high resolution texture maps. A fun thing you can do is actually open up the blender scenes we downloaded earlier in the benchmarking part of the video. To do so, you need to do a quick administrative thing in Windows by showing hidden folders in the File Explorer Options menu. To do this, go to your Windows search bar in the bottom left corner of your screen, then type File Explorer Options, then go to the View tab here, and then select the Show Hidden Folders button here, then press OK. Now you can go to your C drive, go to the Users folder, Folder, then click on your username. In this folder, you should now see the previously hidden app data folder. Open this folder up, then open the local folder, then open the Blender benchmark launcher folder, then open the scenes folder. In here, you'll see a bunch of folders like this, which have the Blender file for each of the benchmarking scenes you may have downloaded earlier if you did the benchmark test. So this folder has the BMW scene that I used earlier for the benchmark. Opening the folder up, we can see a thumbnail and a Blender file. To open it up, I'm just going to right click the Blender file and then select the Open With option and then pick Blender. With Blender open, the Cycles Render Engine active and the GPU Optics option selected, you can see the viewport is very responsive with no lag at all. I can move around and work in a complicated scene like this with no issues, which is really great to see and speaks to the laptop's power. Anyways, that's it for this one. A quick summary of what I found. The CPU benchmark had decent responsiveness, but high temps and loud fans. The GPU benchmark had great responsiveness, no lag, and low temps and quiet fans. Sculpting performance was great, no lag. 
low temps and medium to high fans depending on the poly count, and was able to handle models of up to 10 million vertices with no problems. Vertex painting was not the best, responsiveness was low with significant lag, moderate temps and medium to high fans. Most computers would have trouble in this area however, so this is expected. UV unwrapping was great, high responsiveness, low temps and low fans. And finally, texture painting had great responsiveness, little to no lag, but moderate to high temps and fans depending on brush selection. Overall, if you're thinking about getting the same or similar laptop for Blender, I would definitely recommend overall great performance, but expect that you will have moderate fan noise and temps from time to time. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope it helped, and we'll see you in the next one.